Hello, good evening, good evening. Thank you. Uh, welcome uh, to everyone. Thank you so much for uh, coming this evening and taking time out of your night to spend uh, the evening with us. Um, uh, we have a lot of things to get to tonight. We have a lot of new information um, that many of you may not have seen thus far that we want to show you. Uh, we are here to answer your questions and we also really want to get your feedback tonight um, because you may have seen but we're at the beginning stages of the, the, the design process and there's a lot of information uh, and feedback we need from you to help us with the design direction of this project. Um, my name is Adam Wolf. I am your Director of Planning and Building. I'm joined here tonight with by RJ Suko, our Director of Public Works, Todd Cusimano, who you'll hear from in a, in a minute, our Town Manager, and Ron Cappy of Cappy Architects, our consultant and our architect for this project. Um, I think I have that. We, um, we know there's been a lot of uh, questions from our last meeting we had in December um, with the neighborhood surrounding Town Hall. Um, specifically, we wanted to just dive right in and talk about the project need and long range fis fiscal plan uh, and infrastructure plan. And there's no better person to really give you that information than our town manager, Todd Kusumana. So I'm going give to it, give it over to him. Welcome, everyone. So I, I'm going to try to keep this short, but it's important to the conversation. Um, so hopefully, if I see your eyes glaze over, I'll uh, tone it down. But um, I'm excited to tell the story because I don't feel like everyone tells the story of Corte Madera. You know, I think back to the 2000s when I was a police chief and I was reading about um, Corte Madera, the grand jury reports, how we were fiscally insolvent, we were fiscally irresponsible, uh, process was poor in the town of Corte Madera, uh, and many other stories such as that. Um, and really, I never heard the voice coming from Corte Madera to tell our story. When I came here in 2016, um, I came here really not knowing um, how I was going to do as a town manager, but I knew one thing for sure about myself and this community and this council. It was that we were going to develop a plan, and our legacy was to set up the future leadership of this community and this community for decisions facing us, not just 10 years from now, 20 years from now, but 50 to 75 years out. So think about that for a second. Um, so what are we susceptible to? Every natural disaster known to mankind, right? Sea level rise, floods fires, earthquakes. Half our communities in the flood zone, half our communities in the fire zone. We're not a sleepy community. Corte Madera has huge infrastructure needs. Corte Madera is also a regional powerhouse in bringing people into Marin County and into Corte Madera, those two shopping centers. You know, our beautiful parks, our walkability um, on the hillsides, it's beautiful. Um, and I'm proud of it. I think when I think of Corte Madera and I compare ourselves to our sister cities, I think of Corte Madera is just hard working. We put our heads down and we do the work, but we don't tell our story. So today I'm going to tell you the story of the Corte Madera plan. And it's not to talk at you. It's not one person that developed this plan. It's a number of committees, the council, the commission, staff, and community members. And it's a three-year conversation going back to 2016 and now. And it was to develop a plan, first, of fiscal responsibility. And so what we did is we felt, I'm going to talk about two pots of money. And we can talk about this later, but it's important. And so the first pot of money is service delivery. It's all of our people, our staff. Every five to seven years, a fiscal crisis happens. What do we do in government? We freeze and eliminate positions, right? We always talk about that. And so as staff, what do you hear from us every year? And you haven't heard it in three years, but what do you hear? Well, we're doing more with less. Well, no, let's work within our means and let's figure this out. We're all taxpayers. We all want government to work a certain way. So what did we do? We looked at public safety, police and fire. We consolidated them. And when we consolidated them, we had economies to scale and efficiencies. We saved seven figures in Corte Madera on those two fire and police consolidations in 2013 and in 2018. We didn't eliminate service. We didn't lessen the ground, the troops on the ground that protect us. We eliminated the high cost positions. That money then went back into a fund, and that fund allowed us to pay our unfunded liabilities, retiree health, and pension obligations. So real quickly, because it's important, 
And I challenge everybody in this room because you should be proud of this because the town of Corte Madera is doing something that I don't know any other city in the state of California that's doing. Pension obligations are so huge in this, in this, in this state. And what, and what they did in CalPERS and what the criticism is of local government is they basically said, okay, CalPERS, they can only lower the discount rate so much. And so they said, you're gonna take out a 30-year mortgage, as an example, at a 7% discount rate. And at the end of that mortgage, you'll be fully funded, cities and towns. Well, they did it at 7% because if they lowered it, it's too expensive for cities and towns to pay. They would eliminate positions. And it's a political decision they made. So going back with the help of our council, led by our mayor now, Mayor Andrews, and our finance committee, we developed a strategy. And, and first it was the analysis, it really should be a 30-year plan at a 5% discount rate. So due to the consolidations and some of the economic development you've seen in our community with RH, the support of the shopping centers, Amy's, we will be fully funded at a 5% discount rate in 2034, in 14 years, okay? We're the only ones that can say that. We're gonna be fully funded with our retiree health cost in 12 years. We developed a 10-year strategy because we know the market's gonna set, right? Every five to seven years, we're overdue. Our plans, speak to that. The worst economic downturn that we've ever experienced in the history of the town of Corte Madero was in the 2000s. It was $2.5 million over five years. Today, we can sustain three times that in a five-year period. And so I'm not sitting here patting anyone on the back. I'm telling the story of Corte Madero that we have a plan. We have a plan in multiple areas. A plan is only as good as the plan. You got to be able to pivot. And that's what we're doing. And that's, what we, that's, what, that's where this whole conversation started. So once we did that, we started to move on to the next step. Climate adaptation, right? We have a climate, a climate adaptation plan that's going on right now. It's about an 18 to 24 month process. It's important because as the council has really told us as staff, develop the strategy. This is a 50 year strategy, right? And so what they're gonna do over the next two years is we're gonna figure out what are our options with sea level rise, climate change, and how do we protect ourselves? And from that, then we need a revenue stream to do that. And so what staff did back when we talked about the sales tax measure, before it was a half a, half a cent sales tax measure, right? It brought in about two, two million, $2.5 million annually. It was renewed every six years. What we did is we went back to the voters you and we said, hey, look, this is a forever tax because it's our infrastructure. It protects our infrastructure. And let's increase it a quarter cent, a three quarter cents. And let's, let's send a property tax right, a property tax that you had based on flood control, let's rescind that and let's share this tax burden with people, you, we still pay it, right, because we live here, we still pay sales tax, but let's share it with those people that come in and enjoy our community, right? They should pay a part of this too because we have to protect them too, we have to protect our businesses. And so when we did that, it actually brings in a revenue stream of four million annually, okay. So now as we move forward and we're talking about infrastructure, because I was here to, and I told this story to all of you. When you have 75 words or less, you have to use words carefully. And when I use the word infrastructure, and, and I'll just tell you, it's, I, people um, have questioned me about it, um, and I can stand here and tell you this is what I mean by infrastructure. Infrastructure is everything. It's facilities, it's streets and roads, it's parks, it's everything that has to do with the town of Corte Madera. So what we started to do is we started to develop a 10 year at a time strategy. The first 10 years are focused on facilities, streets and roads, sanitary district. It's a hundred million dollar, it's a hundred million dollar plan. And so this is from a separate, this is from the second pot of money. This is all infrastructure. So as you look at it, and this, this will change, this will change every two years in a budget cycle, It'll change every five years when we, when we go out on our capital improvement projects list. We'll continue to, to fine tune this, right? But this is our strategy. You have about $100 million to the left, this pie. 30 million is the sanitary district, and about 68 to 70 million is town infrastructure. Um, on the sanitary district side, what we're doing is we're focusing on improving all of our lines underneath. As you know, we have an old, old town, and so you have to improve those. The laterals are a big conversation, and as you, most of you may know, hopefully, sidewalks and laterals underneath are the responsibility of the homeowner. Staff and the council absolutely recognizes that that's expensive. And so what we're trying to do in this 10-year plan is to share the cost. So if it's a town-controlled project, we want to help you with that. 
Um, and so there's a lot of work being done on that, and we believe we have money without raising fees over the next five years to do that. On the infrastructure side, it's the pie on the right. And I, so when we talk about the town hall addition and people hear a number, I agree, 10 million is a lot. I don't know what to compare that to in today's dollars, to be quite honest with you, but to have the conversation if we're gonna have it fiscally, it's important to know what we're comparing it to. And so on the 10-year on the plan, we have um, what we have in reserves now and the revenue that we will make over the next 10 years from our, from our grants, our, um, our sales tax measure is about 60 million. You can see 13 million right now is earmarked for town facilities. About nine of that, nine and a half, is the town hall addition, and then three to four million of that is the firehouse here in Tamil Pius. It's a cost that we'll probably share with Larkspur. It's a longer conversation, um, giving that building a facelift, making it uh, retrofitted, retrofitting it right, and making some improvements. Um, on the other side, you have about 29 million, that's road maintenance, transportation improvements, and then you have about 15 million of flood control. These pies will, will obviously ebb and flow as we go through the year, but my point to everyone is we have a $100 million infrastructure plan. We have the revenue. We're not raising taxes, fees. That's a flat number. That's what we have. That's what we have. Show me another community our size that can do that. Um, the second part of this plan is as you get through year three, three years out, we'll have our capital, um, we'll have a good idea of what our climate adaptation needs are. And so you're talking about, do we need a sea level rise? Are we gonna use the marsh as a vertical barrier? What are our options? Those options probably range between the 30 up to $60 million. And so timing of when we do our facilities, our streets and roads, and some of our flood control, that climate adaptation plan will come into the second 11 years out. And so we'll have another $80 million plus grants available to start to attack that. And so it's a timing issue of when do we do facilities, when do we do streets and roads, when do we start to do sea level walls or, or barriers or whatever we have to do from a, from a flood control standpoint. Our flood control system is about $20 million today. It's expensive. My point to everyone is that we have a plan. We think we have a revenue stream to, to meet our needs, and then we have a plan that we want to discuss with our community to move forward. And I'm going to own this. This project, when I originally started this, a year ago and started talking to council and staff, I originally put a two to three million dollar placeholder on the town hall edition. Because at the time I wasn't completely sure about this plan. Because we kept it, we had it, this is a, there's a lot to this, right? You can imagine. Um, and what I wanted to do is put a band-aid on the town hall problem and throw two or three million into it and get me by for 10 or 15 to 20 years. As I started to do it, the council, some community members that were involved and staff said, hey, step back solve the problem of what you just said at the start of this conversation. This is a 50 to 75 year fix, town hall. Let's fix it. If you're gonna fix streets and roads and our infrastructure, fix it, don't patch it. Do it right the first time. Two to three million dollars may sound good right now, but that's taxpayer money. You have a hundred million dollars in 10 years, spend it the right way, follow the plan. And so I own that. And so there's no, there's no gamesmanship here. I wasn't trying to get any, that's me. I, I'll take ownership, and, and I agree. I think it's, it's step back, and then what, how do we solve the problem? And the last piece is from a needs assessment standpoint. It's really hard to show you something when we haven't designed anything, right? So the last year has really been spent on a needs assessment. We have about 25 employees at any given point in our town hall. Right now you have town hall, it's about 6,000 square feet. It has a council chambers, and then you have a trailer about 1,500 square feet that has engineers. All of our people need to be in one building. And so we're trying to get our people in one building. We're looking at the, the council chambers as a community room as well. We want this to be safe in the event of an earthquake. We want to make it available if the power outages occur. We also want to have amenities for our community that you deserve. Your taxpayers, you should have something that's going to be available for you if need be. Um, and the other part is, and our most busy part of our our building is downstairs in planning and building. You know, those of you that have been down there, you know. I don't need to say anything. If you had a tour of our building, you know. The last piece is, I'm not here to, to have a conversation of a need for a new town hall. That town hall has 32 code violations. Some of them I can't correct, okay? And so my people are in a building that has mold and is unsafe. I am moving my staff out of that building. The question is, do I lease it or how do I handle it? I'm not asking. I have to do it. Now the question is, am I going to be able to do it and allow the amenities of our community 
And am I going to be able to keep our staff together? As you know, when you go into the building for something, you're going to multiple departments. And you should be able, you pay money and taxes. You should have something that you should be proud of. So I've read things on next door, and I have to buy my, my, I'm a public servant, and so you're not going to hurt my feelings. But this isn't about employees having this state-of-the-art Taj Mahal or calling it the Wolf Den after Adam. You know, that's not what it is. So, um, but here it is. We're here to tell you the plan. So now when we have this conversation, you understand the fiscal kind of conversation. Please talk to me one-on-one. -on -one. Talk to me at any point, because this is important. It starts here. You know, and, and again, if you have a problem with the plan, that's what we are as a community, you know now, and now you can challenge. Like, what are we doing? We can do this, let's make it better. The second piece is facilities, you can look at it. It's 13 million of a $100 million plan for 10 years. It's $13 million for two facilities that we solve a 75 year problem um, over 20 years of a $180 million plan, right? And so you gotta put it in relation. The piece that I'm really proud of and I'll, and I'll stop, but it's important because we hear like, what is your plan? We're working on the plan, and we think we, we're well on our way. The last piece, too, is within disaster preparedness. So we're susceptible to not just sea level rise, but also disasters. So $8 million, about 800000 annually, we put towards vegetation management, the CHIPPER program. We support our neighborhood response groups. We're um, supporting a coordinator for that. Um, we're doing the CHIPPER program. We're helping, you know, because we've never enforced our ordinances, so we've educated the community. Now we're like, look, we, we're going to do something and we're going to enforce it. And so instead of enforcing it right off the bat, we're like, hey, we haven't enforced this for 10, 20 years. Let's help you with vegetation management. Let's go up and help you in your property. And so it's not a clear cut. It's like help you be comfortable with what we're doing, spacing. We'll pay for it. We'll help you with your sales tax monies at work. That's what's paying for this. And so we are putting more to vegetation management and fire prevention than Mill Valley and all the other cities and towns in this county that get credit for doing something. Because we put our head down and we're doing the work. Marla Orth has been doing a lot of that uh, on the Chipper program and a great job. I'm proud of it. We didn't solve anything. My point is we have a plan and we're set up to set, the, set us up for, for multiple options as we move forward. The town hall edition is one of them. We're starting to approach, hey, if you're gonna solve it, solve the needs completely. Now the question is, do we need parking? Does it have to be that tall? Can we eliminate parking and lower 14 feet? Do you need a community room that big? You know, do, do we wanna spend $10 million? This is for you. This is the input and that's where we're at. And so um, with that, yeah, I know. So I just wanna know, so when you go on, that you know we have a, it's important. And so now it's 10% of our $100 million plan, the facility, and I'll turn it over to staff, thanks. Thanks, Todd. And, and just so you know, one of the ways that we're working, having this workshop is after the presentation, Todd's gonna to be available, talk, talk through any specific questions you may have about what he just presented. Sorry, Todd, for cutting you off, but I do wanna make sure we get to the other part of this presentation, which is Ron Cappy, hearing from our architect. Um, and again, during the presentation, if you have any questions, you wanna write them down. If not, that's okay too. There's a small enough group. I think if you just raise your hands during the Q&A, we'll get to you. Ron, please. Hello, everybody. My name is Ron Cappy. I see some familiar faces. I see some new faces. Thank you all for coming out. Uh, I have an office over in San Rafael, and I've been working with uh, your community for over a year now on uh, the public and community process. I want to go into that a little bit and then get to some of the um, design work that we're doing now and get to the work. Really, the goal of the workshop is to hear from you, get your input, and you know, with that, we can uh, kind of take the next step. Let me get the technical part going. Okay, it goes like, too little sensitive. There we go, let's see if I can do it. Okay. So uh, the general plan identified the need for a, a town hall addition in 2009. In 2019, we were uh, brought on board. Uh, the first discussion was about site selection. I'll go into that a little bit more in a minute. And then uh, a community needs assessment. What does the community need? Taking a look at the existing building, Todd's already indicated the building code violations. Uh, and then doing the public outreach, which this is a part of. 
We set up a working group meetings. Uh, we had uh, three in uh, the first quarter of 2019. I see some working group members here. Could you raise your hand? So if I get anything wrong about the working group, you'll correct me. And then we had community workshops during the second and fourth quarter of 2019. Let's see here if we can get this going. I'm really sensitive. Damn. Okay. All right. Oh, the first discussion with the working group was about site selection. We looked at two sites, the site by the town hall and then a site at Pixley, which is the corner of the park. Some of the, and I'll get into that in a minute because I have a, a master plan that we, was also developed at that time. Some of the conclusions were to move the administrative and finances office to a new building and develop a new community a room council chambers. Also, we looked at an opportunity for a public plaza, a public space, and one amenity that was obvious were the three redwoods that we want, and there's discussions about that. This is really bad. Is there a better way? Okay, good. Okay. So the, in the orange is the town hall addition location A and park site B. Uh, there's a lot of interest in the park, uh, but some in the end the discussion led to uh, some negatives, which were, uh, it's in a floodplain, there is no infrastructure, and ultimately we we're looking at a, at least $5 million more to do it at the park. Uh, some trees would have had to be uh, also taken down. So there, a, there were some high points that started to push the discussion back to uh, location A. Uh, other spots were also discussed, but uh, ultimately we went back to the town, town hall center. Is there a better control? This is really... Just, just, just give, me the, give me the eye and I'll... Yeah, let's do that. This is very sensitive. I've got fat fingers, I guess. Am I going up or down? Or good? Yeah, you'll, we'll find out. Okay, okay so uh, the proposed town hall location. So I give a quick summary of the square footage at the top. Uh, ultimately, it was 10,000 square feet. That's remodeling uh, some of the existing uh, building and adding some new square footage. Next. Like that better. Yeah. yeah. So in the community workshop, two meetings in May, uh, some of the discussion led to uh, talks about budget concerns, which Todd was addressing uh, earlier uh, for discussion. Uh, the need for the community room, council chambers being more, uh, more spacious. Right now it seats about 45 for council meetings and we ended up looking at doubling that size. Uh, the existing building, we've talked about it, inadequate and unsafe. Uh, Eco-friendly concerns as part of the town identity. And parking concerns always. Next. So uh, coming in uh, and taking a first look at it, I, I, as an architect, as a, as a planner, as a designer, what are the opportunities and constraints of the town hall site? Uh, so we felt that uh, the public needs to be served, it needs a better uh, counter uh, and better ability to, uh, for the people that are doing projects in the town that are interacting with, with the uh, town staff. We're already addressing the community room council chambers, saving the redwood trees and incorporating them. And that led to an idea of a public plaza where you could put the trees in the tree wells and um, ultimately it will show, uh, we are showing about an 1800 square foot plaza uh, for an outdoor space and improving the work areas for the public servants. The challenges as we looked at the site were it's on a sloping uh, site that changes about 10 feet in elevation. The sidewalk slopes along Tamalpais. Uh, we need to reorganize the parking lot. The, the two entry points was interesting. You have to enter from Tamil Pius, and you also enter from the parking lot. So we had to set up something where people could come at it from both ways, which led to ADA concerns. And then there's concerns about budget, concerns about height. Next. 
So this led to some guiding principles that when you uh, go, I know some of you were looking at the boards uh, ahead of time, uh, some similar uh, concepts that run through all of the, of the schemes that you're seeing. The need for accessibility led to a centralized, a centralized tower that would have an elevator or have stairs so you could get at it from the parking level and you could get at it from Tamalpais level. So that, uh, at, at one point, uh, we were looking at two separate buildings. We had to bring the buildings together with the central uh, circulation tower. Uh, the redwood tree amenity led to the community plaza idea that starts showing up in all of the concepts. Uh, the community room council chambers, uh, the idea that it's more than a council chambers, it meets multiple needs now and continue to do that for the community uh, in the last emergency, in the last PG&E shutoffs and so forth, it really was clear the need for that. The large public service counter, and then the parking constraints led to a sub-building solution which shows up on some of the ideas. Sustainable goals uh, are always part of it. Next. So really our sustainable goals are to reduce carbon emissions, promote healthy and energy efficient buildings, and develop energy saving programs. We're taking a three-pronged approach. We're preparing a, a lead checklist we're implementing California Green Building Standards and we're collaborating with Bay REN, which is the Regional Energy Network. On your right is a list of some of the things that are included. Uh, we did a concept level cost estimate and these are included in the, in the uh, uh, cost estimate already. There's some additional ideas that are on the board at Station 5 that we're asking you to see if you'd like to have those included in the project or not. Next and next. Okay, so our programming process briefly. Uh, over on your left, we were looking at first to expand the council chambers in the existing uh, building. And so the blue, uh, the light blue, are, it shows the large council chambers with some support uh, elements around it, a lobby, some meeting rooms. So we started out with that idea and then along with that over on the right hand side was uh, putting the, uh, the public service counter on the parking level and putting administrative offices above. Okay. So then that led to what I'm calling 3D block diagram. So over on the left, you start to see in blue representing it as, as a, some kind of glassy type of uh, uh, connecting structure. That's the elevator, that's the stairway, that's what starts to bring the buildings uh, connected together. Then, uh, at that time, with this sort of bulk of a building, we were only keeping two redwood trees. We thought that, you know, uh, with the two-story structure, uh, the foundation for down below starts to compromise uh, one of the, the redwood trees. And at that point, we uh, keep staying there for a second. Uh, we aligned uh, the front of the new addition with the existing building as a starting point and that started to push it maybe too close to the street. So then we resolved it towards the diagrams that were expressed as building form. You see on the top was the idea of putting a new roof on the existing building, connecting it all together with that roof form. That's a two-story structure. It's shown on both sides there. Uh, when we went to a taller building, which is on the bottom, or a building form, uh, that started to give the possibility of preserving the, the third redwood tree. And then we began to talk about moving the council chambers to the new building. And uh, there was a budget concern ultimately about adding a new roof onto the existing building. So we started to abandon that idea. Next. So with the existing building remaining with the current roof, uh, we uh, started to move the public service center over to that side and it, it kind of worked out programmatically in terms of the space that was needed for that and the support offices that were needed for that. So uh, the administrative offices that are there now and the council chambers that are there now uh, could uh, create a much a, a larger public service uh, center than what uh, you've experienced uh, downstairs. The new community room uh, could either be at the plaza level or it could be on a third floor. 
The basic uh, change there is if it's on the plaza level, you have a flat ceiling. If it's on the third floor, you could have more of a soaring ce ceiling like the space we're in now. Uh, if it's a flat ceiling, we still can have a tall space. Uh, so there are some pros and cons there that we were looking at. So then we began to look at some roof form uh, alternatives uh, with massing studies. And this was one that we presented in December. And then from there, we looked at some sketches of uh, what it might look like, some of the character of, of the building, some of the roof forms perpendicular to Tamalpais, parallel to Tamalpais. But throughout, and all of these have uh, three redwood trees now. So that, that was st started to be a constant. Uh, and then we uh, started the opportunity to park some parking underneath uh, the plaza. Next. So now just to take a look at it in, in plan form, the, uh, the blue on the uh, right is the administrative offices that were all consolidated now. This is public works, this is finance, this is planning all together. The tan color is that connecting core with the elevator and stairs. And the green is the public service counter with the administrative staff that's serving the public most on a daily basis being in that location. And the, and the pink is the plaza area, which is about 1,800 square feet, as I mentioned. So the, uh, the remodeled area is 2,000. The new area is 3,500 for a total of 6,500 on this level. And this is the main plaza level. The circles are the redwood trees. Going upstairs in this scheme is the council chamber, seating 94 now. Uh, again, uh, it could be rotated. You can see the rectangles are similar. It could be on the plaza level if that was desired, and this is some kind of input that we want to get from you tonight. Or it could be upstairs, like we're showing it in this particular location. Uh, it's about 2,400 square feet. Next. And then going back downstairs, uh, we, we were able to park five cars and some bikes underneath the building. Uh, you still see the, the connecting core, and then down below is uh, some support offices for administration. In gray is some storage areas. Uh, some of the uh, substandard areas we're just not trying to renovate at all. We're just calling it storage. It's, you know, it's not tall enough. It's, it's, uh, we're just, in a way, uh, abandoning it to storage, that, and that's you see in the uh, left-hand lower corner, primarily. Uh, pointing out with that circle is that one redwood tree may need to be removed with a two-story scheme because uh, the footprint down below starts to get big and starts to uh, compromise the roots. Next. Okay, then we looked around for some civic, civ civic examples in our area. Took a look at Mill Valley, Tiburon, Larkspur. We're showing some ideas. Uh, Mill Valley Library, uh, the uh, Mill Valley City Hall, Tiburon Library. You know them, you, you've seen them. People brought those ideas up to us. I put in one of ours, which is in the upper uh, right-hand corner, which was a, uh, a, also a community process with the senior, uh, a, a seniors group and a library group collaborating for a, 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 about a 10,000 square foot building. Next. And keep going. Okay, so we present some visualizations tonight. Uh, this is a visualization of the courtyard that I mentioned uh, several times already. This is showing three redwood trees. It's showing tree uh, uh, seating around the redwoods as a, a tree well. The idea of a, of a trellis as a wayfinding that takes you to the entrance, uh, and the public service center on the left. We want to talk about what kind of materials you like to see on the plaza, that kind of thing. Uh, go ahead. So then we have three options that we're focused on tonight. Two are three stories, and one is two stories. So the first three-story option has a ridge parallel to Tamil Pius. Uh, you see it uh, behind the second flagpole is the, is the high, high ridge. So the idea here is pulling it back from the street with the lower structure, part of the structure in front. Uh, public service center is on the left, three existing redwood trees. 
The, uh, from the December meeting, we were able to reduce the height of this building five feet. So we've already brought it down. The height from Tamalpais Avenue is measured from about where that dog is, is uh, 41 feet to the ridge that's right behind the California flag. And the height from the parking lot is 47 feet. Next. Quick question on, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Is, is this, uh, is the flagpole, is that scale correct in that? I'm about to answer that question. <laughs> yeah, I anticipated that question. Uh, this is that same uh, model, a uh, massing model is viewed uh, looking west. Uh, again, you could be looking at a council chambers upstairs or it could be administrative upstairs. And let's move on to the question. Okay, this is an option B, and so what this does is take that roof ridge and turn it perpendicular to Tamalpais, and it's pretty much equal to the face of the existing building. So to take a look at the heights, uh, the redwood height from the sidewalk level currently varies from 60 to 62 feet, and those are accu accurately depicted, they were surveyed. Uh, the flagpole heights are at 38 feet, same thing, they, they've been surveyed. The elevation heights of the new addition, it's the same as the uh, other option, the ridge. 41 feet from Tamalpais, 47 feet from the parking lot. The three-story building at the ridge line is 20 feet below the existing treetops, and the lobby elevation at the ridge is 25 feet, so this, uh, the secondary ridge that you see behind the American flag. It's 25 feet below the treetops. So that just to give you a uh, relative scale. Go ahead. This is the option as seen looking west. As this version pushes back from the street, the parking count is compromised at the rear. So that's the trade-off there. Is if you think it's too close to town and want to push it back, we start to lose some parking spaces. So we'll talk about that next. Option C is a two-story uh, structure, and so it's going back, if you remember the original massing model where we we're talking about two-story structure, this is a representation of that idea. So this idea has the community room council chamber shown directly adjacent to the plaza level. Uh, there's some really nice things about that. You can spill out from the council chamber to the community room and use that outdoor, outdoor space. Administrative offices would then be down in, on the parking level dug in more. Uh, the height from Tamalpais Avenue is 25 feet. The height from the parking lot is 31 feet. There's a six, 16 foot difference between option B and option C. Okay. And again, seeing that uh, from uh, the uh, looking west towards uh, Mount Tam, uh, one redwood tree has been removed. Uh, basically, uh, more foundation work, uh, more retaining walls, a bigger footprint downstairs, and so that's a trade-off there. Next. I'll keep going. Okay, so this is the participatory part, uh, part of it. I mean, the Q&A is, is incredibly important that's coming right up. So what we've done is created some boards that start to look at character. Uh, so if you again look at these as uh, glorified massing models, just to show you the bulk. Now we're going to start to talk about you know, style and character. So we've showed you some window types, and we want you to uh, select things that you prefer. Uh, the variations one and two down at the start, I think, bear a little explanation. The variation one is actually the Iwani Lodge. And so that's more of an inspiration for what could the council chamber look like if it's on the plaza level with a flat ceiling. So you can see that a flat ceiling you know, can be pretty grand, pretty, uh, a pretty special space. And uh, I think we would really take our cue from this type of a structure, uh, which I think very successfully creates a, a beautiful space. Variation two is a Mill Valley church, and so that's with a, a, truss, a truss type of form, a similar dimension to what the community center, uh, 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 the, the council chamber uh, community room would look like. So it gives you a sense of the scale of how a trust building would be. Next. And then we take a look at 
roofing materials, we take a look at siding materials, we took a, take a look at variations on trellising, and we take a look at variation on seating. And we'd like to get your, uh, your input on that, and uh, staff has devised a clever way to try to, uh, to capture that with stickers. Next. That's it for me. So then, uh, Adam, I will give you some wrap-up comments, and we'll move to Q&A. Thank, Thank you. Thanks, Ron. Appreciate that. Um, and just to be clear, after we do Q&A, yes, the idea is that we have stickers, and we would like your feedback on the various options that you just heard from, about from Ron. That's what these different stations are. If you open up the little passport that we uh, provided you, you'll see some instructions in there. So just a reminder on that. And then <clears throat> this is really transitioning. This is uh, station really six really quickly. There is a process we've highlighted where we've been, clearly going forward. The next step, um, or one of the next steps in the process really is going to be um, taking this project and talking uh, ultimately to the, the planning commission about this, um, this project. Uh, there will be uh, net required approvals uh, by the town. The planning commission will review it. What we have is a preliminary review hearing, again, just what we want to do is take the feedback we get tonight uh, and then present a preliminary uh, design concept to the Planning Commission, get feedback there before taking any further steps with um, uh, necessary approvals for that. Um, but there are several more public hearings, uh, public meetings to go. Um, and again, that's why we're asking if you want to stay informed, please sign up and, and, and sign your email. Um, and so with that, um, we're going to move, can you just move past this? Um, yeah, again, so we're going to do questions, and we're happy to, if anybody did fill out a card, we're happy to take those now. Um, you're welcome to read them yourself, but let's, let's go to questions. We'll, we're, we're 15 minutes behind, but I think we're, at, we're, we're fine um, having the next 15 minutes. Um, I, I'm happy to call on you, but we do really want to um, get your feedback tonight as well. We'll be manning these stations. Ron will be here to answer questions uh, about any of the boards uh, over on this side of the room um, and his team. Again, Todd's available to, to follow up on any questions you may have specifically about the, the fiscal planning and, and budget. And we have uh, some more information about project costs over here as well. So with that, um, Happy to answer any questions. Mr. Jackson, can you give him a, a, a microphone? Uh, so first of all, I'd like to just say um, thank you. I, I do appreciate that you guys are trying and are listening to feedback and are trying. So I do, I do really appreciate that. As you presented this, though, I've got one comment for this group that I hope we all understand as a community, which is the proposal, that we're, and where I think the biggest problem is with, with the space, which is that we have too much space that's being proposed, is to expand the council chambers from where they are now to 2,400 square feet. As I recall, last time I was in the council and counted the ceiling tiles, current council space is about 700 square feet. So you are talking about more than tripling that space for what you're now calling, and Ron, I, I, I'm trying not, I, I don't know if this is purposeful on you all's part or not, but you keep referring to a community room, and in fact, Ron corrected himself. I don't know if anybody noticed, he said community center, and then he said Ooh, community room uh, when he was de de describing that room. So my question is, what is this space we're in now, which I believe is our community center where we have community events, and so therefore, why do we need 2,400 square feet? And that 2,400 square feet then impacts the entire project to make it bigger, more expensive, and taller. Thank you, thank you. And, um, I can speak a little, a little bit to what was uh, the conversation behind the expansion of the council chambers. And we can call it council chambers, we can call it council chambers slash community room. The fact is, um, as we've seen just recently, it's used for multiple purposes. Um, and so that's the idea behind, we've had, um, you know, we've used it um, 
four community meetings, NRGs, uh, groups meet there. We have staff meetings in there all the time. Um, we have, um, during the, uh, the PSPS, obviously it was used for the community to plug in and, and be there and, and sort of uh, locate in that room during that time. So it's not a community center though. This is the community center, so let's make that point. We do have a, um, actually we have a slide that we can put up that I think you're right. It's, it's really about, um, the bottom here shows it is an increase of se from 750 to 1100 square feet. So it, it's really based, in, and Ron could probably speak to this more, but it's starting with a capacity number of what type of capacity you want to have for the town of, uh, of Corte Madera. And, and that can be adjusted one way or the other, but when you think long term and you think about some of the meetings we've had and having adequate space also not only for larger meetings that from time to time we have, um, but also for things like um, uh, lobby space, which currently our current community, uh, sorry, current council chambers, as you know, you step out of the room and you're basically on the street, things like that, um, and other things. But it's certainly something that if, if their feeling is it's too big and it's not, that's a, not a needed size, I mean, that's good feedback for us to hear. And so if others have, feel that's also a, um, an important consideration, it's not a big enough size. But maybe, Ron, you can speak to exactly what goes into the number. I just wanted to add one thing, is that really the idea of enlargement was not something we initiated. Uh, this is something we heard uh, kind of steadily and steadily uh, as we got on board and started talking to community members, uh, complaints about the, the smallness of, uh, of the council chambers. And then as it developed over the year, the idea of the, of the multi-purpose seemed like a really positive. Uh, what I've seen on these kind of civic projects is that this is the shot. This is the one shot for the community for a long period of time. So there is some future planning as well that goes on. But it's, it's all trying to be responsive to what you all think you need. So uh, I would say that uh, you, it's a legitimate question, but uh, that's really was response to what I heard. Actually, since we're talking about the chambers, Brian had a similar question. Brian, was that, was your question answered or do you want to Okay, Brian asks, what kind of public or private um, functions outside of council and committee meetings happen in the council chambers slash community use? I think what, what Adam um, spoke about earlier, um, I know I'm talking to Rebecca, our town clerk, there's a lot of things that happen um, in the council chambers on weekends. Um, Corte Madera is very in a, a great place to have meetings because we're very close to the freeway and there aren't a lot of other um, places in Southern Marin, talking to Rebecca and others, that can easily get in, people can have their meeting and get out. So. I would say if you've ever had a, if any of you have gotten a ticket, you'll, you'll be in your, your driving school at, uh, on Fridays um, taking your class for uh, tickets, um, getting, after you get your ticket, you have to go to driving school there. There's a, there's a variety of functions. I'm sure we have a whole calendar of events that actually, how it's booked, we can provide that information if that's important. Does Rebecca or Todd, do you want to speak to what else functions there? Okay, thanks. Um, I want to dovetail on the first question asked, and I also want to say that I, having been at the previous meeting, I appreciate, I see a lot of our feedback has been incorporated into some of the planning, especially with the design and that. Um, my question is, what about traffic increase? With the increased size in the community room, and it was stated at the last meeting that the, there's this, it could be rented out like daily. So how much of a traffic increase do you see in that regard? Right, and I think that's the one factor um, that would actually lend itself to any sort of increase. I mean. What immediately, I think, when you think of a bigger building, you're thinking of greater demand, but really what the main purpose of this building is, is to house our existing employees. I mean, if you think in the, which is about 25 between the two buildings right now, if you think long term we are, and we're gonna do an, an, an analysis about this, so as this moves forward, there will be an environmental traffic analysis that gets into the nitty gritty of it, but big picture. Um, 
we're, we're including about maybe an increase over the 50 to 75 years or whatever into the future about up to five so of employees so that's not going to drive a significant amount of increased demand the other side is the permit center it's coming now it's going to come in the future that's really dependent on on the economy and what you see today is what you're going to get in the future so just because we have a bigger permit center doesn't nobody nobody really willingly comes to our permit center <laughs> unless they have to so they, um, but council meetings the same thing to, we we have plenty of council meetings in the past that have drawn over capacity um, we expect that well that just depends on the item being heard so that really we don't see that as a change in traffic the one thing I think we do have to consider is schedule when how often is that room being utilized and try to actually make sure that it's off peak hours so evenings are probably better because that's staff is, is off at that time but to answer your question we will we've been thinking about that and we'll get into that but we really don't see a significant change at all in in the overall amount of traffic um, there, we are looking at circulate some circulation changes that may occur as a result of switching some of the uses to Tamil Pius um, but beyond that it's it, we, we feel it's gonna be minimal we'll, we'll prove we'll prove that through the analysis or we'll find out through the analysis so thank you for the question just a comment about the community, larger community space. Um, I'm involved in the neighborhood response groups here in Corte Madera and in all of Central Marin, and we have a heck of a time finding, we're putting on educational events all the time, both for the community and for the NRGs, and we cannot always get this center. We have to really look for community space, and I think uh, having a little larger space, if we're gonna do this, would be excellent. Yes. Yes, sir. A comment and a question. Uh, this is my third meeting I've attended. Appreciate the time of staff and council and our architect. Uh, and I concur that it's, it's certainly a need that the town has to fulfill. And I would hope that to, if we do build a new civic center, city hall, or town hall, we call it, we build a first class uh, facility and something that will last in perpetuity. With respect to the council chambers and community room, I was a bit confused by that too. Uh, we have a community room in our new police station that uh, we paid for through parcel taxes and is available. I don't know how often it's used. I've never attended a meeting there. I have attended many meetings in the council chambers. I think that's one area where we do need to have space. But if we don't need to build it to the size that some may have concerns about, is it possible to uh, build a council chambers and slash community room that would be accessible, but also maybe use some of those dollars to really effectively help improve our own existing community center? Uh, I think that would be money well spent. Uh, secondly, a question I had, and I've mentioned this before, is that uh, if we're going to have a new town hall, I hope that it would be uh, accessible to the general public. And uh, we're only open 26 hours a day, or excuse me, 26 hours a week now, which is just a little over three days a week that we're open. If we're going to have a new facility, it's going to be inviting. I would hope that it would be accessible. And one of the thoughts I had, and particularly with respect to building and planning and engineering, that's where I hear complaints from residents about not having access, is it possible to maybe consider having a part-time planning or engineering tech, someone that could be there at the counter to answer questions and be available at the time that the uh, town hall is closed? Thank you. Just real quickly, I just want to say that, you know, it's a, it's a good point. I just want to first say town hall is open five days a week upstairs, our administrative team, four days a week downstairs with planning and building. And to your point, and I think I've had a lot of com conversations with George Topar as well, of being, being creative of how we, you know, do we consider uh, a weekend day or how do we, how do we open longer but to be able to, con to do the work of the staff. I mean, you have to recognize that one of our, our upcoming council meetings has to do with planning and building, it's an appeal, and the document is, I think, I don't know how many hundreds of pages. So you do have to write documents and you do have to be creative, um, but it's something well stated from a customer service standpoint. The other one I just want to touch on is just the building. I was part of the police facility building. One of the best things we ever did was add that community room. But what we did is, it was built as an operation center number one and a community room number two, and we, we made some mistakes with it. We could have designed it differently, and so we're trying to take some of those concepts of what you see here, 
what I'll tell you is the, the Central Maine Police Authority uh, community room is probably rented out every night. So it's fully, it's at capacity. And so we're, it, it surprised us because we didn't know what to anticipate. And so that we're trying to keep that um, thoughtful um, as we move forward. But really, we have a lot of civic groups in town. And a lot of our groups walk to the meetings. So a lot of the energy groups walk. And so they don't all drive. Some have to because they're on the other side of town. But um, so those are just some observations I had. Get up here and then to uh, Mr. Prosen. Our population here is approximately uh, 9,800, and uh, just looking ahead, this facility uh, is going to support uh, our town here for 50 plus years. And uh, any prediction uh, as far as the population growth over the next, say, 10, 20 years? Because I'm just thinking uh, um, having the proper administration in place, I think, will be uh, very positive and make sure that we uh, plan things properly and implement them properly. Thanks. So, the, is there a question about the population? Population growth next ten years, twenty years, uh, just under ten thousand right now. Right. I, I mean, it's a good question. Um, um, I, I think we've been growing at I want to say um, three percent or so um, between. Frankly, it's, so it's a low figure. So um, obviously, it depends on how much. Ultimately, the new housing gets built, but it's it's it's, it's uh, I would expect maybe in the range of 500 to 1,000 additional people in the next 10 to 20 years. Um, oh, Rich. Yeah, is that something? Oh, good. Hi, um, Ron. I wanted to let you know that I really appreciate what I perceived as the struggle of how you deal with the existing town hall and its aesthetic as you design next to it, and it was interesting that. It seems like where you ended up was, okay, leave the flat roof and then we do something over here and lose the large arches because those are the old entryways, although we still have the half round windows. And I think you're, um, you have to strike an attitude and I think you're almost there. I think that, that 1960s Frank Lloyd Wright aesthetic, which is what the original drawings showed, it's almost time to let go of it. And at that point, I think, you know, you've got the shell and now you just have to, and it's just my opinion, I think you have to say, what's the new aesthetic, and then you just wrap whatever the new aesthetic is with the old. The other thing is, and I, I heard what you said about, well, there's a certain cost to it. You, you know, you do slope roofs over here. Um, maybe we have to keep flat for cost purposes, but I mean, in the larger context, and, and playing off of what a few other folks have suggested, it's a 50-year-old or 50-year projected forward building. Might as well, I think, integrate it in. That would just be my take. And I mean, certainly you could say, let's leave it like this, and we'll build that, and then everybody will say, oh, I can see you added the new, this is the new building, and here's the old building, but I think you're so close, maybe just integrate the two. Um, hi, a um, couple things. I love the Awani as a uh, example. I love that you're saving the Redwoods as much as you can. I would vote for the two-story Awani with the Redwoods in a second, but what I really want to say is I don't think it's right to confuse this with a community center because this is the community center and since the mid 1990s uh, the community has been waiting for the town to make an investment in our community center and we stepped back and we very patiently waited while we put the police station first and now we're going to be asked to do it again while you put town hall first and I am waiting for the town. I mean, this place was remodeled very well, I think, and the patio was done, and Cafe Verde was done with community contributions and community money, and I want to see the town of Corte Madera commit some money to the community center. And I don't think you should build a new community center over at Town Hall because you're not going to want to be open all the time. It's going to be like this sort of privileged, elite, huge space that never gets used. It's what my dad used to call building a church for Easter Sunday. And you can always move down here for the big thing. So I'm just saying the town needs to hear that there's a commitment for this building and further developing Park Madera Center, maybe with an additional venue behind Cafe Verde, which could be used for all these community meetings that need to happen. So I guess I'm just saying I need to hear this as part of a master plan and that the community center isn't going to get booted 
down for another decade. Thank you. Thanks, Pat. What I'll tell you is on our, on our master plan, um, as you know, we've tried to uh, improve our space. Uh, we put $220,000 to this whole side of the building to add uh, programming with our intergenerational center. We're also doing some improvements on the back side of about $200,000. Um, we're committed to helping Cafe Verde improve the patio um, and really add some amenities there. We've actually opened up a studio in the shopping center, adding space within the community. And so right now our plan in probably $200,000 chunks of money over the next five years to make improvements to improve our amenities. We think this is a beautiful building um, and just keep making it better and better. Um, right now we're looking from a public safety standpoint um, and, and a town service delivery standpoint and the two that really jump out at staff are the town hall and the firehouse um, as we move forward and I think it, it went into our original assessment where our building's going to be and when we really did the master planning and kind of landed where we are where our town hall is now and where the firehouse is um, due to the shopping center and something we haven't discussed a lot of people are like well why aren't you building in the park or why aren't you um, doing something in the shopping center. We can't touch the shopping center until 2034. It's a fiscal, it's our bond. It's our, our borrowing, how we borrowed against it. The good news is it's worth more than we owe. We make money now every year on it. So thank you, uh, Mayor Andrews and Council for helping us do that. Um, but we can't do anything there. And so right now when we talk about a future community center or doing something, 2034 is really the date for that. So as we work on our 20-year plan, that's where you'll start to see some major, major kind of opportunities. So, so I think to be considerate of time, let's do one or two more questions, and then um, we'll break off our stations and we'll give an exercise on how to use the stickers so we can all cast um, our preferences there. Um, anyone who hasn't spoken? Yeah, I have a question for you. Can you talk a little about financing? Because it looks like there's a $10 million price tag is that coming out of sales tax? Um, where's that coming out of? How's that working? More slowly, because you question, sure. yeah, for those of us who didn't quite get, because the yeah, yeah. yeah, so. add to that really quickly, construction takes, I don't know, a couple of years once it started, but you said something like the money's coming in over 10 years, and Yes, we have a number of capital improvement projects. Right now we have about between the sanitary district and our, our sales tax fund that actually takes sales tax monies, also restricted monies, about a million dollars annually. Right now we have about, um, we have about $22 million in the bank. And so that $22 million and also the $8 million we bring in annually, we'll be able to um, perform and deliver our capital improvement projects that we currently have in our budget that we've shared with the community, approved by council. And the good news to your point is we'll be able to, um, and we didn't know this until November, we had a lot of discussions, we won't have to borrow. We'll be able to pay within our means. And it's not at the expense of any other projects. And so we'll be able to, and really to your point, it's actually in our advantage. We want to extend the project as long as possible. So I'll be able to touch three fiscal years based, based on revenue, the projects we're doing and what we have in the bank also keeping a $2.5 million reserve in our capital improvements budget. So I'm comfortable with that. Didn't know it until November of this last year. And so we will not have to borrow. Let's go. Oh, there it is. Yes, I have a question about this building. What's its earthquake status? I can uh, jump in there. Uh, so the building you're standing in is, is fairly, you know, newish compared to, to the town hall uh, that we're at up the street. And, um, we haven't had an actual seismic analysis performed on this building. Uh, it is a single-story wood frame structure built somewhat modern era. Um, I wouldn't suggest that there's a, a, a critical issue with any sort of lateral load. Uh, resistance concerns, uh, seismic or wind events. Um, it could be reviewed uh, uh, and it could be upgraded to current standards, um, but that would be a, a further analysis to go in. It would, it's a pretty involved analysis to, to run through a seismic uh, you know, analysis on a building, of an existing building. But there are methods and, and means of doing that. So it's, it's just a time-consuming analysis, but. If you 
We have, we have one right here, and then we'll get right back to you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my name is Steve Hoffmeyer. I live on Willow, and um, I really don't want to throw um, nuts and bolts into this whole plan. I've been um, working with the uh, town and all my residents on Willow about the post office and the park, and I want to thank uh, Pat Ravazio for just bringing in such a great historical, you know, reference about using the park. This is the center of the park. This is where town hall should be, okay? I grew up here. I've had people tell me about the property where the post office is now. Um, the fire station used to be where the town hall is now. We would like to bring it back, our area, for all the residents, for the safety, for the parking, for the traffic, to more of a residential area. I proposed to Adam today, I talked to him, the stoplights here, you could have double access around the backside of um, the Petco, and you can build whatever type of building you want back there. There's a storage facility for weeding, there's tons of parking, none of that parking gets utilized. I know it's throwing a total um, you know, nut and bolt in the whole plan, but I don't want to look at it like I told you so in 50 years, okay? Because this area that we're talking about was residential at one time, and it was the fire department. So we the people need to get what we need for this community in the long term and with the safety. Thank you. Let's go one more, George, and then we'll move on to the, hopefully getting your feedback and our stickers on a little sort of more interactive experience. Thanks. Thank you. Oh. Sorry. OK, I'm sorry. I haven't been to a previous meeting, so I don't know, you know, the back history kind of thing on all of this. But let me just read something that uh, might not have come up. This is from the town's budget of the year 2018 to 2019. New public works and planning building provide new office building for customer service counter public works and planning staff offices. Uh, the initial cost was proposed at $150,000, which was for developmental work and architects and things of that nature. And by 2023, it was budgeted at $1.5 million. We have a 5,400 square foot town hall now. We're talking about going up to 10,000 plus square feet. We're talking about maybe five new employees. Granted, there could be more space for some of the employees, but do we really need anything this big? I mean, we've heard this talk about how town hall should be welcoming and friendly, and most of us only go to town hall when we need to. We don't say, let's go to town hall and have coffee and donuts kind of thing. I also looked at some of the construction costs, and I haven't looked at them here. Let me just throw out a couple of figures. The last remodel of Town Hall, which added 48 square feet, paint and carpeting, cost $250,000, or $5,200 per square foot. The police building, 10, roughly 10 years ago, cost a little under $1,300 a square foot. And here we're talking about doing all of this for under $1,000 a square foot. And I think what we've got here, town needs more space. This could take care of the council chamber issue. This strikes me as Charlie Wilson's war. We went from what I need to what I want. And it's like, while we're at it, could we do this? And could we do this? And could we do this? And I wonder how much Someone said, well, we've got this much square footage, five more people, or every person should have 125 square feet, which in this day and age is generous. 
and start from there. Yeah, I will, I'll, I will, I'll just really quickly again, I want to move along, but, but I think Todd spoke to this at the beginning of the, the presentation, really, it was, it was a short-term fix is that's where we started. It was a pre, and we talked about a prefab building, not connected, not solving ADA issues, not remodeling or, or increasing the structural integrity of the existing town hall facility, not incorporating the two at all together in terms of integrating the buildings. So it's literally there just to house um, staff and a, and a, a potentially an improved uh, permit center. Uh, didn't, didn't improve staff, uh, it, it didn't get address um, a variety of things. We actually have some, you know, the a, a graphic that is attempting to sort of get at this, but it ultimately, I think, to some degree, yeah, you're right, and when you sat down and looked at it, let's solve this for the long term, not a quick fix, not something that's not gonna uh, address all the existing issues with the existing town hall facility, which would still have to house um, staff and still have to have um, the council chambers and so on. So that, that's what, once we sat down and started thinking about long term, in the same way that we thought about other problems, how are we gonna solve this long term? How are we gonna think bigger and bolder? I think is, is really what it, what, what, you know, the truth of it. And so I think that's when we, we stepped back and we started doing a, a cost estimate that actually incor incorporated some of the things that you're seeing tonight, which is, uh, is more, yeah, it's building plan, $85,000 for the building plan, and it's the same problem. Okay, so, thank you. And, and the last question, you have a question, Ms. Jackson? Ms. Jackson? Do you wanna, I, I don't wanna leave you out, but <laughs> I saw the face and it was, you wanted to say something, and I, I want to get to this, and then let's let's just move on. Yep. I just have a quick comment. I just wanted to really thank Ron. I think, and everybody. I think you guys really listened to us at the last meeting. Um, uh, obviously, uh, being one of the closest neighbors to the building, I really, really support the, the smaller um, height footprint, especially. Um, and just remind everybody that's working on this building that. Anytime you have a high window, you're going to be looking right into my bedroom window and all of the neighbors' yards and windows. So anybody that's in the neighbors, um, within the neighborhood, you know, those, uh, yeah, it looks nice to have um, windows up at the higher level, but those are looking right into our windows. Um, and, uh, you know, when I hear things like soaring and show place as a, as a person who's been in public service for over um, 30 years and a taxpayer myself, those kind of words just make me cringe. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, I think we need a functional building. I think you guys need a safe place to work. I think the public deserves a nice place to come in and do their business. But um, I don't think we need a show place. I think we need a nice building. And I think we need something that fits into our residential neighborhood. As Steve said, it is a residential neighborhood. And um, that's what we're looking for. Great, and so at this point, please. If I can do a quick yeah, introduction to the sticker exercise. Um, so you'll see you have um, three sets of stickers. Here at station three, we'd like you to cast the, you have one yellow sticker here at A, B, or C options. We have two three-story options. We have one two-story option. You've got the green stickers, which are the far end, speak to sustainability. Um, you've got, <clears throat> basically eight choices here that you could prioritize with four stickers that you could pick amongst. And then here you've got blue stickers and, and you put these on any of the styles or features you like. Um, also, if you just want to do a custom um, comment, you know, whether it's site related or anything, just go ahead and grab a post-it and just write your comment, put it on the board and we'll, we'll take it down. And if you have any questions, feel free to grab any of our staff. We'll help you, help you through the process. Thank you.